Hey everyone, the name is Eric Doris. So, okay, we know some people, they grow up with a very strong sense of who they are and a very strong compass of values or morals or beliefs that are of very strong significance to them in their daily life. But there is also a high group of people with, who grew up with a kind of ambiguous morality or uncertainty about what they want or who they are or what it is that is important in life. So today's video goes out to what we could call sometimes single observers or double deciders or people that grow up kind of on the midline of thinking and feeling, but also people who grow up on in particular the midline of feeling and feeling. So I'm talking particularly today about INFPs, uh, about sorry, ENFPs, INFJs, ISFJs and ESFPs. So these four groups of personality types are people that tend to be on the border of introverted feeling and extroverted feeling. Now, typically for an ENFP, introverted feeling is described as the auxiliary secondary function, while extroverted feeling is undiscussed. But I would like to, in today's video, really show you why it should be discussed and how important it is to the average ENFP. Now, if you ask an ENFP matters of extroverted feeling, how they feel about the tribe, how they feel about other people, how they respond to the group, how they communicate with other people, how they come across, how they express their values and themselves to the outer world, and what they do for other people, you'll find something interesting. And that is that most ENFPs have relatively strong extroverted feelings. So typically it shouldn't be the case. We don't even know what the role of this function is. But if you ask them about it, they themselves will say they have strong extroverted feeling. Comparatively, actually, they will say they have about as strong extroverted feeling as they have introverted feeling. So most ENFPs will perceive themselves as being both people that relatively enjoy working on their own identity and their own beliefs and their own values just as much about as they like connecting with other people and dealing with interpersonal relationships. ENFPs are about as good as prioritizing themselves as they are prioritizing other people. That means you could say they are double feelers or feeling generalists. This also means that they are people that struggle because they are on this borderline <laughs> because they are borderline feeling types they are personality types that struggle to make decisions based on what they want as opposed to what other people want a lot of time INFJs and ENFPs all tend to say they find it hard to make decisions based on what they want as opposed to what other people want INFJs and ENFPs also find it comparatively difficult to explain who they are to other people. It is difficult for them to explain their own identity or to know their own identity or to express themselves to other people. It is also difficult for these types to tell the difference between their own feelings and the feelings of other people. How do I differentiate between what I want and what other people want? How do I tell the difference between my own values and other people's values? These are all struggles of uh, these borderline feeling types. And uh, in today's video, I'm gonna discuss some of the things that you can take with you as a borderline feeling type to better understand yourself, but also things you can understand and take away from other personality types. So if you compare yourself against people like say ENFJs or INFPs, ISFPs or ESFJs, you'll learn something really interesting about yourself. Being specialized into one dimension of feeling will lead to a better ability to make decisions based on your values. If you are extremely strong in your inner compass, it is comparatively easier for you to make a decision based on values because you find it easier to choose yourself over other people. INFPs and ISFPs find it a lot easier to choose for themselves than you do. And so you can learn a lot from these personality types. You can learn to choose for yourself. So as an ENFP or as an ESFP, it can be really important to learn to first choose for yourself and only secondly consider other people and what you can do for them. 
as an ENFP or an ESFP, you have a clear advantage over the INFP or ISFP because it's a lot easier for you to express yourself and your identity to other people. INFPs and ISFPs tend to find that they often feel judged by other people. Other people look down on me for this or that. Other people are judging me for this or that. I need to separate myself from other people to get to know myself. As an ENFP, it's uh, easier to express what you know about yourself to other people without worrying about feeling judged or without worrying about coming across in the wrong way because you are already pretty good at explaining yourself and your values to other people. You're pretty good at communicating yourself. So there's less of a chance that you'll say something you regret or that you say something stupid or that you will be laughed at by other people because you have a strong identity that is also strong in display. ENFPs and ESFPs, as well as INFJs and ISFJs, are on the border of feeling and thinking. That doesn't necessarily mean you are better at feeling than an ENFJ or an ESFJ. On the contrary, an ENFJ or an ESFJ will find it a lot easier to go into and put themselves into other people's shoes than you do. You, they can really go into and connect with other people and build relationships without, with other people without worrying about losing themselves in other people without worrying that they will give away too much or that uh, they will forget the, about themselves and their own needs. They will go into talking with other people already with strong values and with strong concept of what their values are. They will already say very strongly, I feel this way, I care about this, this is important to me, this is something I am passionate about. That means the ENFJ or the ESFJ has comparatively higher passion than you do for everything that comes to values and to their life and what they value in life. As an ENFP or an ESFP, you'll find that often your passion is lacking at the expense of your energy or enthusiasm. You are on the average more enthusiastic, more energetic, more interested, more curious than the average ESFJ or ENFJ. You are, you feel a higher lust to do things, to experience life, to have fun, to entertain yourself, to do things just because they are fun. While the ENFJ or an ESFJ feels a higher sense of, I need to do this for the sake of the tribe and for the sake of what is right and for the sake of my beliefs, I have to do this. So as an ESFJ or an ENFJ, there is a lot more passion and fire, but for you as an ENFP or for you as an INFJ, there's a lot more ambiguity of, should I do this or should I not do this? So often, uh, double deciders are kind of on the border of feeling and thinking. That means a lot of time you have maybe 60% feeling and 40% thinking, and that's not a big difference. And that means that you are very good at talking yourself out of doing things you want. You can quite often talk yourself out of doing things that are important to you. You can rationalize away something you care about. You can tell yourself, you can, or you could say, douse the fire with water. You could uh, uh, really uh, keep yourself from doing something really stupid, but you could also find yourself avoiding doing something really important because you think too much or because you think out yourself out of important activities. The ENFJ or the INFP will find it a lot easier to stand by and burn by their values and beliefs, even if it means a risk of burning up, even if it means a risk of getting hurt. So a lot of time ENFPs and INFJs, as well as the ISFJs and ESFPs are people that tend to dance or yoke or entertain themselves away from situations uh, like uh, to keep themselves from caring about it too much. They will use enthusiasm to avoid passion. They will use uh, and manage a higher amount of energy or interest or curiosity uh, to balance out a lack of passion for what they do. So a lot of time, even if you don't feel that what you do is important, even if you feel it is just entertainment, even if you feel it's just recreation or silly fun, you'll still do it because you have some energy or entertainment or amusement from it. But a lack of passion can be a pitfall 
and uh, a lack of uh, a clear direction of your passion can be your pitfall in particular the primary problem is there is a lack of direction for your passion should you be angry or stand up for yourself and for your own identity or your own values against the tribe or should you speak out and say this is what I want and why why can't you see how important this is and why can't you listen to me or should you direct your passion towards uh, extroverted feeling and rather talk let's all together do something about this really important issue let's bond together as a group and care about this let's say something let's speak out together as a tribe or as a community and make a difference together a lot of time there is no direction of passion for you there is no direction of passion for your personality type there is no clear certainty of what you want to do with your passion even if you do have passion as an INFJ or an ISFJ there might still be this feeling of what am I supposed to do with all this passion I have so much passion but I don't know what to do with it or where to direct it or in what way or should I connect with people, should I talk to others, should I uh, build a, a team together with others, should I prioritize myself, should I do what I want or consider my own needs or should I put myself in other people's shoes and go out and do something for other people. And uh, this is also what leads to this uh, strength of thinking because thinking can really come up and can really be something that is really there in your life uh, because your concern or your confusion about values can lead to a tendency to overthink your values and to wait on doing making decisions or wait on showing your judgment or morality or doing what is right and of course most of all this kind of predisposition leads to a strength of intuition or sensing. Being a double feeler, being borderline on feeling, and introverted feeling and extroverted feeling means being a specialist on some form of intuition or sensing. And that means having some area in your life, some dimension of intuition or sensing that is a vast and major preoccupation in your life and something you are constantly ultimately concerned with and a project or an interest or a passion or a curiosity that has come to devote or absorb most of your awake life and perhaps even the life you have in your dreams so if you are a double feeler if you are borderline on feeling and thinking if you struggle to uh, really develop passion in your life as an INFJ or an ESFP what can you do I would recommend one primary thing observe the ENFJs and the INFPs the ISFPs and the ESFJs and learn from them they are not afraid to get burned to make yourself sure absolutely sure that you are not too afraid to get burned on your own fire and learn that you don't need to compromise fire for energy you don't need to choose between passion and enthusiasm and you can enjoy something but still also at the same time care about it intensely and you can have a strong sense of fascination or humor or fun in a situation without compromising that it is something important to you or something you ultimately value very much in your life. Those are my tips for you today. Thanks everyone for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.